What if villagers cut open the soles of your feet and stuffed them with horse hair to stop you escaping? Welcome to Read This or Die, the show devoted to remarkable books, including what we call parallel classics. Today, we shall elaborate on why you should read Nikolai Leskov's The Enchanted Wanderer and other stories. If you ask people familiar with Russian literature to list the top five Russian writers in the 19th century, few will include Nikolai Lyeskov amongst the literary giants like Goncharov or Turgenev. Nonetheless, Tolstoy himself, always reading between the lines, stated, Lyeskov is a writer for the future. We believe that, finally, the future has arrived. Lyeskov, the eldest of seven children, was born in 1831 in a village close, by Russian standards, to Moscow. He left school and joined the civil service in 1846. Afterwards, he moved to Kiev, where he lived for eight years and learned Ukrainian and Polish. Throughout his life, he was an idealist of sorts, advocating in his youth for the abolition of serfdom under Tsar Alexander II in 1861 and later siding with the so-called gradualists, those who wished to reform Russia without a revolution. This stance placed him at odds with the so-called impatience, whose extremists, the so-called nihilists, would eventually threaten Lyeskov's life. Lyeskov remained widely neglected until his death in 1895 due to the antagonism of his enemies, who considered him to be a minor author. This is, a salaried reporter pretending to be not only an intellectual, but also an independent writer. They even accused him of being a reactionary on the payroll of the secret police. Thus, for Lyeskov, recognition came only in his last few years, due to Chekhov and Soloviev, and continued into the 20th century thanks to towering figures like Gorky and Zamyatin. Lyeskov was a professional journalist and possessed a vast knowledge of Russia and Russians from the countryside, due to his first-hand experiences traveling across the country. His penchant for chronicling is ever-present in all his work. Lyeskov believed that literature must be connected to truth and beauty in a manner free from abstractions. Literature must be, so to speak, tangible. We have mentioned that Lyeskov's enemies considered him a minor author. They justified this opinion based on the way Leskov composed his narratives. In an essay on the literary works of Leskov, Walter Benjamin describes him as the epitome of the Russian tradition of oral storytelling, which is essentially the popular culture crystallized into the shape of extraordinary narrations. I would add that, in some instances, Leskov's narrative structure is close to that of the fairy tale. Surprisingly enough, Lyeskov did not believe himself gifted when it came to fantasy. Rather, he thought all his stories were, more or less, based on the real Russia he knew so well. That's why Western readers haven't paid much attention to a writer so different from the top Russian authors. On the other hand, Russian defenders of Lyeskov consider him to be the most Russian of Russian writers. These were the words of his fellow citizen Dias Mirsky a literary historian assassinated in a Soviet concentration camp in Magadan, Siberia. Mirsky himself affirmed that the roots of Leskov's narratives were to be found in anecdotes. This anecdotal basis manifested itself in circumstances that couldn't lead to serious novels, in the style of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment or Tolstoy's War and Peace. For Leskov's enemies, an anecdote just begets an anecdotic text that can't be taken seriously. Regarding Lyeskov's literary technique, he displayed a lively and humorous style not exempt from picturing the darkest corners of the human soul. He also felt comfortable resorting to the structure of stories within stories, typical of the popular literary tradition everywhere in the world. He also liked breaking the temporal continuity of a story narrated in past tense by suddenly introducing the use of present tense. This discontinuity shakes the readers and brings them closer to the text in an unexpected manner, changing the tone of the story for a while. In my opinion, it's fair to say that while Leskov might not have broken boundaries, his originality lies in reinventing tradition. 
Thus, he reset the boundaries by resetting the Russian oral and literary traditions. This volume contains 17 wondrous short stories and novellas. I would like to tell you about two of them. The first one is probably Lyaskov's most famous work, The Lady Macbeth of Nsensk, which Shostakovich turned into an opera. The second one is Lefty, also known as The Steel Flea. It's widely regarded as one of the finest novellas ever written in any language. Like The Lady Macbeth of Nsensk, it astonishes the reader with a masterful plot twist. However, unlike the previously mentioned novella, it doesn't reveal the deepest recesses of mankind's psyche, but rather a joyful and playful sight that brightens our day. We based this review on my copy of The Enchanted Wanderer and Other Stories an extraordinary volume published by Vintage in 2014. It was translated from Russian by Richard Pevere and Larisa Volohonsky and prologued by the former. In case you've never read him, this book truly constitutes an exceptional way to become acquainted with the author. In our next episode, we'll discuss the English author William Somerset Moham and review the tales he wrote whilst traveling through Southeast Asia and after. Till then, keep reading and don't die.